Good morning and welcome to Oasis of Life Ministries. I'm glad you've joined us this morning. God's got a very strong word for us this morning, so let's open our hearts to Him. But before we do that, I've got an announcement to make. In order to go back live on Facebook, we needed 100 likes or 100 people. Followers. 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 Likes. 100 followers. followers. Okay, so 100 followers. <coughs> we have in just two weeks 78. So we only need 22 more. So <coughs> praise God. Tell your friends, get them to come. Follow what's going on, and we'll go back live. We are on Facebook anyway, but we can go back on live at 11.30 on Sunday mornings. And personally, I think live is better. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. So let's go to the Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne right now. And you have said, come boldly to your throne of grace. And we may obtain the mercy and find that grace that we need in a time of need. These are times of need. And right now we join together and we pray for this nation. It's a nation right now in turmoil, but that's got to change. The church has to rise up and be the church. The church needs to rise up and be the body of Christ. Holy Spirit, move upon the church in America today. Move upon the people and open the eyes of our understanding that we need to be the United States. Bring the unity back to the church in order to bring the unity back to the United States. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for your anointing here today. I loose that anointing. I loose the Holy Spirit in this place right now. That everyone watching it and everyone here will be fully touched by the word of God today. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4? And while you're turning there, uh, this week, as I was studying and so on, I did mention last week we were going to talk about the agape covenant. And it just wasn't settling right in my heart as I was studying. It's good stuff. But it just didn't seem like what the Lord wanted. And I went to put the outline together. It just wasn't coming together. And for five minutes, Lord, something's going on here. Tell me what you want. And I heard this from him. And I knew exactly where it was. Attend to my words. Attend to my words. Folks, we've got to get a realization of how very, 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 very important God's word is to us. And if we look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, and let me say daughters for all sons of God in that sense, Attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my saying. Let my words not depart from thine eyes. Keep my words in the midst of your heart. Now look at verse 22. Why are we to do that? For my words are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Well, let me read that from the Amplified Classic Version. <clears throat> my son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. So you can't just hear them, folks. We've got to consent to those sayings. In other words, we've got to say, those sayings are right. Amen. Those sayings are right to me. And then we need to submit to God saying. Let me give you an example. By the stripes that Jesus took, we were healed. Now we consent to it, but we got to submit to it. 
that the blood that Jesus shed was not only for the remission of our sins, but it was done for the healing of our bodies. Yeah. Amen. And I'm just going to say this. The church, the body of Christ, should be healthy physically, yes. mentally, emotionally. Yeah. We should be healthy in our relationships, healthy in our finances. We should be so healthy that the world looks at us, gets jealous, and starts pouring into our churches to find out why we're where we're at. And then we have an opportunity to share with them. It's what Jesus did. Yeah. Amen. I'm looking for the day, and I think that day is upon us, where we walk out of the church and we go to the grocery store. And people in the grocery store start coming and following us down the aisles until there's a crowd and they stop us and say there's something about you. <laughs> what is making you what you are? Yeah. Yeah. You mean hold a church service in a grocery store? Why not? Amen. Amen. See, we got to understand something. Wherever Jesus went, they were drawn to him. And I use the example of the blind men who were walking on the other side of the road. Jesus is on one side, just walking along, minding his own business, heading for wherever he was going that day. And two blind men are walking on the other side and stop and stop him. Now, how did they know who he was? They experienced the glory that was coming from him. They experienced this aura that was surrounding him and the power of God. And Jesus said, what can I do for you? Give us our sight. And notice something. He didn't refuse them. <laughs> he didn't turn to them and say, oh, now wait a minute. You've got sin in your life. I can't give you your sight right now. What did he do? Gave you your sight. Amen. Come on. As Hilton Sutton said, every service when he was here, and that's been nine years ago, or 19 years ago already, that he was here, read your Bible. Let's read the Bible. Peter. He said, well, that's Jesus. How about Peter? Peter's coming to town. Oh, we got so many sick people in this town. We could never get them all into the building and have him lay hands on them. Let's just lay them along the side of the road and let him walk down the road. There is so much anointing in Peter that even his shadow would touch them and heal them. That's power, folks. Yes. We say, okay, this is Jesus. Power. This is Peter. This is Peter who denied him three times. Hello? Now, the man is able to walk down the street and even his shadow, the anointing got so wide on him that his shadow was touching people and healing them. Well, I don't know that God heals anymore. Well, that's your business. But you're talking to the wrong fellow. Because I know God heals. Amen. I've experienced it. I've experienced how to get God's healing to tap into it. And what we're going to talk about the next few weeks is attending to God's word. Because God said in Psalm 107, I have sent my word to heal your diseases. Oh, praise God. That's right. He said his word. Jesus, according to 1 John, is the word. But we've also got this book about Jesus that is the Word. There should be a powerful move, and I believe there is one going on right now, and it's going to filter into the churches that will stand for it, a healing move like we've never seen. We thought there was a healing revival in the 40s and 50s. Nothing is going to compare to what we're about to see in the church. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. So 
Well, let me get into this. After reading the Amplified, look at it. Verse 21, let them not depart from your sight. Keep them, God's words, in the center of your heart. Now listen to verse 22 out of the Amplified class. For they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. God's word, our, our healing, is in God's word. But it's also help. A lot of times we experience some healing in the church, but then these things come back. It's time for the church to experience God's divine help. Yeah. Where we're just walking in the help that God has provided. Amen. It's our. Well, Brother Jerry, how am I going to go home and not die in the home if I don't get sick? Choose to go. <laughs> Make it your choice. Like Paul said, I've run my race. I've done all that I'm supposed to do for God. I want to go look in his face. Oh, <laughs> 
instruction in his word will keep us off that evil path because it will keep us on God's path. On God's path is where our healing is. On God's path is where our health is. On God's path is where our prosperity is. On God's path is where our victory is. Yeah. We're going to stay on God's path. Amen. Drop down to verse 18. <laughs> but the path of the just. You got any just here today? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right? The path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. Keep a place there. Go over to 2 Peter. If you would, or just listen, either way. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. That's a whole message in itself right there. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So what we're seeing here is three levels of God's light. A beginning light that shines in the dark. It starts to remove the darkness. But then the more we let that sh light shine, it becomes like the day dawning. But we can't quit yet. We can't quit yet because we need to get to the place where the day star arises in our hearts. Um, what we're seeing here. That is allowing the place of divine influence monitor and lead our life. We're on God's path. And now that light is leading us and guiding us. It's the very glory of God. It's the light of the Holy Spirit who knows he's called the spirit of truth in John 16, 13. Now, if he's called the spirit of truth, I would think he knows the truth pretty well. So if he's there leading us into truth, we can guarantee as we walk in the truth that the truth we know is what's going to set us free. Now, let me, without taking away or adding anything to the word, the truth we know and apply to our life sets us free. Because Jesus said just before that in John 8, he said, if you'll keep my word, you are my disciples indeed. So we not only have to hang on to it, we have to operate in it and allow it to operate through us. That's God's word. We have to do that. Now let's go back, as we go back to Proverbs, let's stop off a couple of places here. Let's, uh, well, go forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, go back. First Timothy. First Timothy. Chapter 1. Verse 18. Paul, right into Timothy, who hit Paul has given the charge or the uh, ordination to be the pastor and evangelist for Ephesus. And he tells him this, this charge I commit unto you, son of Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before of you, that you by them might war a good warfare. And in 1 Timothy 6, Paul writes, fight the good fight of faith. So the warfare is a fight of faith. It's not only our faith in God, it's our faith in God's Word. And the truth of that Word. Alright? Now, so he tells them, use that prophecy. Well, Brother Jared, I've never had a prophet give me a direct word. That's okay. You got a book full of prophecy. For you. Amen. Amen. This book is full of prophecies for you. Because
Because whatever God has told to anybody in this book is for you. Amen. Now, verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. And the word shipwreck pertains to having rough waters. And he gets explicit here of whom Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Paul says, I've taken these two and I've turned them over to Satan so they can learn not to blaspheme. Wow.
You don't have to come lay hands on them. You don't have to pray all night for them, Jesus. You don't have to come to my house and spend days there. All you've got to do is speak. If you speak it, it will be done. Are you catching anything here? What was it? See, Jesus attended to God's word. He knew God's word. And stay on the path of that word.
to the word. <clears throat> Verse 21, let the words or my sayings, let my sayings not depart from thy eyes. Keep my sayings in the midst of your heart. Now why? For my words are life unto those that find them, and their health to all their flesh. And the word health there actually relates to medicine. Now, I would hazard a guess that everybody's been to a doctor at one time or another. And you go to the doctor and he tells you, well, you know, this is what's wrong. And then makes a prescription. And what do they tell you when they give you that prescription? Now, make sure you take all of it. And if you take two pills a day or one a day or three a day or whatever for the next ten days or whatever. Right? Why? Because it takes time for that medication to get into your system. And there's something else sometimes we've got to understand in the body of Christ. We're walking around in the body of Christ looking for miracles. Miracles do occur. I believe in miracles. But faith in its healing can be a process. You can get any amen on that. <laughs> See, what we're looking for a lot in the, especially the Pentecostal churches and people, we're looking for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate instantly. Well, now Jesus, when he got before people, you know, he, they were healed instantly. Some were, some weren't. Well, how about the ten lepers? Ten lepers came to him. Asked him to heal them. He did. They all started to go and go, go show themselves to the high priest. And here's the point. The high priest is standing right in front of him. Nine of them left, one came back. Dropped on his knees and started to praise him. Give him worship. And thank him. And what happened to that one? He was made whole. Not only was he healed from the leprosy, but there was no signs on his body that leprosy ever attacked him. Why?
face of our enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. Notice the connection here. That is not a funeral song. Hello. That is this life. Matthew, or um, Psalm 24 is about Jesus on the cross. Psalm 23 is what we get out of that, him being on the cross in this life now. And Psalm 20, or 22 is Jesus on the cross. 23 is our life now. 24 is the millennial reign when he comes back to earth. Read those three together and follow the path that, that we've got. Powerful. Powerful. So as we look at this, we've got an avenue we've got to stay on. We've got to keep the word in us for God's sayings, our life unto those that find them, and help to all our flesh. So we've got to take a daily dosage of God's Word. We get healed. We need the Word to stay in health. Amen. All right? Now, I was talking about the Holy Spirit there for a moment. And the gifts. Let's go over there for a moment. Uh, first Corinthians.
another the interpretation of those stones. But all these work that one and the self same spirit divided to every man severally as the spirit wills. These operations, these administrations, these manifestations are by the spirit as he chooses. As for as the body is one and has many members, and all members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized or immersed into the body of Christ, whether we be Jews and Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink unto the one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. In other words, what God is saying here, folks, the gifts of the Spirit are there to be in operation by several members of the body of Christ. And they're going to be used as the Spirit gives it out. And I'm not sure what it is, whether we become afraid of those gifts or just ignore them. They should be in operation all the time. Amen. Let me give you an example. We had uh, we had Mary Baxter here a while back. Uh, she had written a book about her visitation to heaven and hell. She went to both. God took her to both. And she had this man with her, Rose. You remember this? She had this man with her that had just hooked up with her. And uh, he was a young man. And Rose has a pretty good discerning and she came to me after the first or second service. She says, there's, there's something about that man. He, he's not right. And she's going to have problems with him if she doesn't do something. Well, I sat down with Mary and I talked to her. And she said, really? She said, well, the person there, I don't know if Mary ever came and talked to you or not. Did she? No. You remember? Anyway, she said, I'm going to look into that. Well, by the time we were done with singing just 